Hey guys, welcome to my Soul Bliss. Today I'm super excited to be partnering up with Baby Lock Sewing Machines and bringing you another sewing tutorial. Today I'm going to be using the Baby Lock Vibrant, which is this serger right here. This is the perfect serger for everyday use, great for beginners, great if you just need a serger to sew clothes or just need the basics. This is a great one. So make sure to check it out. I'll put links down below for it. I'll also put a link down below for all the videos that I have created with that machine. It's really awesome. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make a microwavable heating pad. This one is filled with rice, so it's really soft and just so nice. I made this size um, and shape to go across my eyes just like this so it can just lay and rest on my face when I feel like that tension in my face or in my eyes. Um, those are really great for it. Another great option is to put it in the freezer, um, especially like making little round ones. My kids um, love those when they go to grandma's house. She has little round ones in her freezer and they use them for all their boo-boos and owies and it's just perfect. So some really great options and ideas. Um, there's also a little poem that goes along with it if you're interested in that. I'll put a link down to the blog post that I'll have up with this video um, and that poem that goes with it. So if you want to give it as a gift for Christmas or um, a birthday present or something like that, you can just have a sweet little poem that goes with it and tie it on there. So that's fun. But the supplies that you're going to need for this project are first you're going to need your fabric. I use 100% cotton flannel. Um, it's just really soft and really nice. You don't want anything with a synthetic fabric in it, something like a polyester, because um, we don't want it to melt in the microwave. That is important. And then I used um, a batting that's microwavable safe, but if it's 100% cotton, really, it's going to be microwave safe. So just look at that. I know Joann's has one that says it's microwave safe, but I think it's pretty much the same as the other ones that are just 100% cotton. So I did add that. You don't have to have the batting either. Um, I just felt like it made it a little softer, a little more cushy and comfort. You know, I love that during the winter whenever I'm cold. So then I also used um, rice again, like I said, to fill this. It's just regular white rice. You could also use beans. Um, that's another option. I just liked how thin and small the rice was. So and then I'm just going to be using all of my basic sewing supplies. Um, I'm also going to be using some um, paper and a pen to show you how we can create the pattern for this. So let's get started. Our first step for this project is going to be making our pattern. Now this is really all about preference and what you feel like you like the most. Um, I really like the length of this. So this is just a normal sheet of cardstock paper. It's 11 and a half inches long. So I'm going to keep that length because then it will cover my temples um, when I go over my eyes. It will cover the sides of my head. So then it's all about the width. And I'm going to start wider and then kind of trim it up and go from there. That's kind of my idea. So I'm just going to keep it at about four and a half. And just eyeball that cutting about right there. This project, I love it because it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you can do whatever, however you want and whatever size you want. So that's really nice. And then I'm just going to fold this paper in half so that both sides match. So they're symmetrical and that'll just be nice. And then right here would be where my nose would go ideally. So I don't want it too far down on my nose. So I am going to come up a little bit and then curve it out so that it gets wider. And again, that's all about preference. I'm going to come down a little bit on the top too. So I'll come down farther. And then you just want to make sure you remember which side is the top and which side is the bottom, which really you can adjust when it's on your face as well. So, and I just like that curve look. That's all about preference. If you just want the straight lines, you can totally do a rectangle and call it good. Come down just a little bit here. Okay, then I can open it up. You can see it kind of just looks like a giant eye mask. 
and I think I'm gonna leave it at that. You could lay that on your face and see if that works for you. But remember, we are gonna take about a quarter of an inch away from the sides for our seam allowance. So keep that in mind. Once your pattern is how you like it, now you're ready to cut it out. So I just like to use these washers as weights and then I use my rotary cutter um, to cut it out. One thing I could have done when I cut this out is I could have kept it folded like this and then put this on a folded edge and just cut out two, just like that. That's about preference as well. So it was just easy to show you guys by laying it out. So now I have those pieces ready. If you want, you can add some batting. I'll probably add one or two layers of this just to um, give that nice, comfortable feeling um, no matter when I wear it or how I wear it. So you want to make sure you're getting a microwave safe one. 100% cotton batting usually is. Um, this one just happens to say it on the packaging, so that's really nice. So I'm going to cut out two of those as well. Once I have all four pieces cut out, I'm going to take my flannel pieces and this is the wrong side. You can't really tell on this fabric. You can kind of feel it. Um, one side's a little bit softer, so that's going to be my right side. And I'm going to put this batting on the wrong side. And I cut my batting a little bit smaller, so that way it's not going to be so much in the seam and it's going to be easier to sew. So I'm going to put those wrong sides to the wrong sides of the flannel or to your main fabric. And then I'm going to put my flannel pieces right sides together. Okay, and then you can pin that in place and we're going to get ready to serge it or sew it together. So like I said earlier, I'm going to be using my serger. This is a great um, project to use a serger for, but if you don't have one, you can always use a sewing machine. Um, this doesn't stretch. I just like using the serger to make sure I catch all my edges and it just gives it a really clean finish. So when we sew this, you're going to want to make sure to leave an opening about two inches wide so that way we can turn it right sides out and add our rice later on. So I'm just going to start at this pin and then I'll finish over at this pin. And kind of, it's always nice to mark that. And I'll just sew all the way around. With it all sewn together, I'm now going to turn it right sides out. Just make sure you're going in between your main fabric and not in between your, um, batting. Now before I do anything else, one thing I like to do is just give it a good press. Um, kind of iron those sides out a little bit. If you need to, you could use like a point turner to make sure those edges are out all the way. Um, but I think I did it pretty good with my fingers. So I'm just going to give it a quick iron and then we will finish it off. Another thing that I like to do with the iron is make sure that these edges that are still open um, are folded in and ironed so that when we go to finish this off that they're all ready to go. Because our next step is going to be adding our rice. So I just have a container of rice and I'll get a spoon and I'll probably just kind of spoon it in there and go from there. Once you have a full of as much rice as you want, um, I didn't stuff it too full on mine because remember, especially if you're making this one um, for right around your eyes, I didn't want it to be too heavy on my face. So I made sure not to pack it too much and then it'll just lay nice and flat. It is still packed though. Um, you can see how thick it is. So just keep that in mind. Again, that's all about preference. So then I'll just come over here to finish it off at this opening and I'm just going to do a quick um, slip stitch. And I've done this quite a few times in other videos. I'll link down below where you can find um, 
a slower explanation. If this is going to be too fast for you, I'm not going to spend too much time on how to do it. But I usually start on the left side and you slip through one side of your fabric, one edge of the seam, pull, and then you just do a little chunk out of the other side. And then I just started a little ways back so that I could get it started. And then I'll just sew those edges together. So, and you want to pull tight so you can't really see those strings. Let's see if I can do this right. And if you need to, you can pin those in place. Usually I just have my hand hold it. There we go. Do a little bit of a slip. Don't get your thread in a knot. There we go. And then go to the other side and do a little, just a little chunk, a little stitch. So that's why it's called a slip stitch because you slip through one side like so, and then pull through and stitch to the other side. So I just really like this one. You can also do a different kind of stitch. This is just what I'm the most comfortable with. So I'll do that all the way to the end of my opening. And then once you have stitched that opening closed, you are all done with your microwavable heating pad. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would love to see what you make and the different shapes and um, uses you find for it. I think there's so many out there and it is so fun and easy to make these. They make a great present. So make sure to um, give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe. Also make sure to check out the Baby Lock Vibrant. I'll put the links down below and I will see you guys next time. Bye.